the shell offers numerous uh, mechanisms for saving you keystrokes. So if you are familiar with these mechanisms, you can very quickly uh, access commands that you have typed before or abbreviate commands uh, or generally save you from having to uh, repeat yourself in a number of ways. Um, the shell records every uh, command that you have entered. So if you type in your shell hind uh, in your shell window the history command, you should see a list of all the recently entered commands. That history can be uh, made persistent. In your home directory, you may find a file uh, dot bash underscore history where you can find uh, commands executed in previous sessions and that file gets loaded at the start of the next cell shell session uh, such that you have access to what you did yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> this can be uh, very useful not only as a typing convenience but also if you want to remind yourself what you did recently if after several trials and errors you finally got something to work and now you want to document what you did you just look at the history and you then uh, copy and paste into your documentation the lines that actually worked. It can also be a forensic tool if someone did something they weren't meant to do then a look in the history may reveal that but that uh, like many other recording mechanisms can also be a bit of a privacy hazard. So read the if you don't like the history mechanism in particular the uh, persistent version of it uh, there are shell variables where you can control whether a history is how much of a history is kept and whether it's kept persistently and you can sh set shell variables to control that. Um, <clears throat> to just insert the nth command line from the shell history you just write exclamation mark and then the the number n that was displayed in front of the command by the history command. Um, you can also write a negative number um, that uh, addresses the command from the end. So uh, the third previous command you can do with exclamation mark minus three or the previous command with exclamation mark minus one. And because that's so common, there's an, uh, just a double exclamation mark has the same effect. <clears throat> Sometimes you want to copy the previous command line the arguments from the previous command line but not the actual command itself. So for example you are going to delete a long list of files you just first want to look at these files with the ls command whether they actually uh, exist uh, before you then run the rm command on the same list of uh, commands and you can uh, refer to the previous command line minus the first word with exclamation mark and a star. Remember this this looks a little bit like dollar star with which is the arguments of uh, a shell script. Um, <clears throat> you can also use just the cursor up and down keys to access the history list. You can move up to recall previous commands, modify them and then uh, reissue the same command by pressing return. If you press return and you then want to execute the next command in the history, you again will have to move, for example, 10 times up if you want to repeat a command that happened uh, 10 times ago. You can type, of course, uh, exclamation mark minus 10 each time. Um, or instead of return, you can type control O. That issues the command like return, but then uh, moves your cursor uh, to the command that immediately follows. So if you type Control O, you will have preloaded already ne the next command uh, from history. So if there is a sequence of five commands that you want to repeat a couple of times, you just go up with your cursor five times and then you uh, press Control O 25 times and you have repeated the five commands five times. There's also a search function with uh, in Emacs with Control S you normally search forward and with Control R you search backward. And if you just type in the bash shell Control R and then the first couple of characters from the command line that you want to retrieve, you will see that it shows up quickly 
if another command was found uh, because it also matched but you want an earlier one just repeatedly press Control r and you will get earlier copies um, there's a long list of other of these uh, history expansion mechanisms but quite a number of them probably were more useful in the um, days of teletype writers with without a cursor but many of these also still make sense today with video terminals and emulators uh, bash in particular uses a built-in line editor uh, and it uses the read line library to do this which is also available as a as a separate library and which you can include in your own programming language uh, in your own application so if you have your own little command prompt in an application and you want to have a history expansion and all these things cursor movements cursor up and down and so on to get access to previous commands then i recommend having a look at one of the several readline libraries that exists um, many emacs uh, like control sequences are supported by the readline library uh, so even if you don't use emacs it's useful to be familiar with some of the basic emacs commands because they crop up in the line editors of many other applications including bash um, so control a and e move to the start and end of a line control k is the kill command it deletes the rest of the line or the entire line if you are in the first uh, column so if you want to get rid of an entire line you just press control a control k and this will leave you with with an empty line uh, control d deletes the character under the cursor whereas pressing the backspace key deletes the cursor uh, right of the cursor so the the rest of the line and the cursor move slightly differently in both cases Control w deletes an entire word namely from the first letter of the word to the cursor position so if you just type the entire word incorrectly just press Control w and it's gone if you've just deleted a line or a string you can reinsert them possibly elsewhere with Control y <coughs> um, if you have used one of the history expansion mechanisms the things like exclamation mark uh, star but you're not quite sure what the result will be you want to see first what the history expansion does you can execute only the history expansion without actually running the command by pressing escape uh, circumflex and therefore preview before you execute and sometimes you start a command line possibly a very long command line and then you actually want to stash it away somewhere because you remember you first have to do something else before you return to that line in that situation uh, what you can do is you just go to the start of the line with control a and then uh, you insert a um, a number sign as a comment character and then you type enter and uh, then this line as a comment so with preserved in its content but without um, actually being executed will be saved in the history from where you can retrieve it later and because this is an extremely common operation you can also type escape number sign which saves you one keystroke um, may seem petty saving one keystroke but i actually use escape uh, number sign very often once you get used to it, it's very useful <clears throat> another abbreviation mechanism that the shell offers is uh, automatic word completion if you type the tab key bash will try to complete the word that you have started and it will use some context information to find out what type of word uh, you have started to write so for example if you started to write dollar and then the beginning of a variable name and you type tab and there is an unambiguous completion possible then uh, bash will complete the variable name after tilde it will complete a username uh, and otherwise it will look at what command comes first in order to decide whether what, what is in front of the word that you want to expand if it's the if it's uh, the first word on the command line it will try to expand a command itself if it's the uh, 
Later in the command line, it will try to interpret the word as a, a path name and expand it with the tab key. Uh, after certain commands, uh, it expects a host name and then it will try to expand a host name. Uh, that works less well these days with DNS because uh, there is not an easily available downloadable list of, of host names. The, uh, internet has become a little bit big but if in etc hosts you have a list of local host names they are also available for um, automatic word completion most commonly you expand file names so you rarely type a complete file name you just type the beginning type tab and then it will complete as much as is unambiguously possible and uh, then if there is two file names, the cursor will stop at the location where the two file names differ and then you can type another character, press tab again and often you've completed it. So you may be able to insert file names with just two, three keystrokes.